Josh Gillen here. We'll be installing the CW3. It's an indirect, direct evaporative cooler. Uh, 240 volts. Within your pack out kit, you automatically have the 63 foot six pin cable. Comes with the unit. Uh, you'll have to choose if you have the wired controller or wireless. While installing the CW3, you can move it up onto the roof piece by piece or crane it up. If you're craning it up, you want to follow the guidelines in the manual. Essentially, you're using two different straps, on one on either side. That way, as you're resting it down on the roof curb, uh, the straps are not in the way, right in the center. And make sure that you just have a rope in between the two so the straps don't slide off. We're going to break down the CW3 piece by piece in order to get it onto the roof and start the install. We're removing the clips. Granted, it's not all that big of a deal, but you want to use a flathead screwdriver and pop out on either side to push these two pieces out. Uh, that way it doesn't crack and break if you just try to wrench it out with one swoop. Um, other than that, Pop the rest of the clips out. All right, with this, removing the panel, pretty easy, just pops right out. We're removing each side panel. Uh, the air filters inside are washable filters. Washed up to four times, uh, or vacuum out. Uh, they're 14 by 25 by one inch filters. Uh, they can be replaced with the cardboard 14 by 25 by one inch throwaway cardboard filters. Now we're going to be removing each of the cores, the direct indirect sections. Uh, in order to do so, you want to remove these clips. So we pull back on these. I'm sure to release them. And then, on this one. and then on the top and bottom, each have these little rubber. The core itself, you have your inlet air coming in here. Exhaust air will come out the side, exiting out the top. And this is your supply air. So this section here is your direct section. And this is the supply air of the indirect. You just need to remove this plastic piece. Everything is labeled on the board and on each wire. So you won't need to uh, be too concerned about where the wires go. As far as the solenoid drain pieces go, uh, you know, this is a three pin, plus it's yellow. Uh, so everything lines up. So it will be really easy to replace once you pull everything off. After removing each part, uh, we're going to move to moving the top top piece and then the motor. That way we can carry each piece up onto the roof easily. Uh, you don't actually need to unscrew these clips, just pull them completely out. So removing the top, unscrew each of these tabs. Top will just lift right off. And we'll get to the exhaust motor underneath. You want to remove all your rubber pieces here. So you don't lose them. 
and then just keep track of your control boards on this right side and your motor sticker here. There is a indention in this foam piece that you want to have when you're replacing the motor. Your wire is facing that same direction. Pull this motor up. In order to remove this whole foam piece, you want to pull the hoses off. And then there's clips inside each corner. So there's four clips. You reach inside on either side. You want to pull towards you. It's like a double clip. You want to pull them towards you and then lift up on the foam piece and that'll release the foam. So now that each, all four sides are unclipped, you can reach in and pull out the whole foam piece. There are two screws, 5 sixteenths on either side. We're going to remove those, push on those clips in order to remove the supply motor. This is the screw that I'm talking about. There's one on either side. So pull these out, which will release the supply motor. Got enough. There's a bunch of zip ties that are holding all the wires together that I've already removed um, prior to removing the whole foam piece. But there's also a release clip to remove the supply motor underneath the uh, entire unit. So you have to lift this up on both sides to push on this clip. Up you want to run the rope through the center, this section here, and then wrap it around to your other side. So you have a lot more surface area of picking it up. Granted, it's light, but the issue is this foam piece can separate from this hardened plastic inside. You want to make sure that it doesn't fall apart as you're doing it. That center, now you'll be able to pick this up to get it off the roof. The center plastic or foam piece. Besides being the thinnest and easiest part to crack, uh, by pulling up on this part here, will separate the foam from your plastic. So you wanna make sure that you're not lifting or pulling on these center skinny pieces. Now I got my weather seal on my roof curb. I'm gonna take the level and check both directions. It's got little tabs to balance your level on. 
Check both ways. Looks level to me. So now I'm good to screw it in. Got your screws in your pack out kit. For the 63 foot six pin cable, you want to run this down along the side. There's a little space in the corners for it. You want to run that before mounting your base. And you drop this down into the dropper. So this would be used for the wired or wireless controller. Um, also connected to the receiver for the wireless controller. These metal pieces here will slip inside to the ductwork. You'll have one screw on either side of these and then two screws which will go into your the V-slots. Along with that, you also have these metal pieces here to help tie everything down. So these four are slip on here. Straps here will slide down inside and you pinch the two together. You want to make sure you get everything lined up. Uh, this is a good time to install the drain. Makes it a lot easier to reach down in there. Uh, the drain itself has a washer. You're going to want to make sure it's on top. All right, at this point, now that it's mounted down to the roof curb, make sure that the hoses and everything, once you put the motor down, that nothing's going to be pinched. As far as the drain goes, it's has a flat side. You need to make sure that that lines up with the flat side in the mold of the base pan. You don't want to tighten down with like vice grips or anything. Just use your hand tight. So on the supply motor back, you're essentially making sure that you're getting your clips lined back up into the correct holes. Making sure all wires are out of the way. Once clips are in, remember to put your screws back in. With this, the sticker we're pointing out, essentially this is the main piece that you need to line up in order for it to slide into place. All right, putting the cores back in. They are directional, uh, one per side. Just make sure that they line up so the exhausts are shooting back into these holes here. Just be careful. Put them in and then put your rubber flaps back on. And your tubes here, they're labeled type blue hose. Uh, as you're putting them in, just make sure they're nice and tight and hear a clip. What you don't want to do is knock them in far enough once the water pressure kicks on, that's going to pop out and you have water squirting all over the place. The water solenoid is located under the unit on the left side. The solenoid wire connections uh, is not polar sensitive, so it doesn't matter which direction they go on to. The solenoid should be filling up uh, with water pressure, squirting out like that. Thank you. 